We have a product, and the product is called a super phone. I got a super phone. My phone knows. My phone knows whether or not you've texted me before. If you've never texted me before, my phone knows. Go get that person's information. So it'll write you back and say, yo, I got your text, but I need your information. Add yourself to my phone. My phone knows because I sell my products and services and uh, uh, interactions and experiences. I sell them direct. So that means my phone knows whether you've supported my album or not. My phone knows whether or not you've come to a concert. My phone knows when you text me about my concert, how many concerts you've been to in the past and which ticket link to send you. That's a super phone, you know? So, uh, and my phone knows most importantly, when you do buy something from me, that you deserve a personal thank you. So when you buy something from me, my phone knows, look, you better thank that person. It's very simple. It's, it's built on relationships. It's built on contacts as currency. It's built on relationship equity. It's built on the concept of your network being your net worth. So, you know, if, whether you got five fans, <laughs> you know, do you know who your number one fan is? If it's your mom, then are you giving her the respect and acknowledgement and appreciation that she deserves for being your number one fan? If you could put a layer of technology on your, on your iPhone contacts that tells you, you know, even if you're not an artist, it tells you how much your friends have actually spent on you, whether it be in time or money. How valuable would that actually be? You know, you might be like, oh, you know what? Um, my boy has actually taken me out to dinner or cut, paid for dinners that we've had just when we're catching up, you know, over 10 times. And I haven't even reached out to him. You know, you might be a little bit more cognizant. And so that's what I say. Be, you know, put real value and make sure you make sure that the value that you respect the value of your relationships. When you get my record, when you get my experience, like I said, the technology is about scalable communication, personal communication. There's no platform currently that does that, you know, that's smart enough to do it. Like you might be able to get a bot that responds to people on Twitter. You might be able to get a bot that responds to people, you know, maybe when someone, I don't even know if that exists. Hey, someone follows you on Instagram. Yo, here's my album. The, and it's the, and like, there's not a layer on Twitter that you could differentiate between people who follow you, who bought your album, and people who follow you who don't. The super phone knows, you know what I mean? So that's really what it's about. It's about smart, scalable, personal, communication. And then based on different qualifiers, maybe it's about how much time a fan has spent, you know, uh, volunteering. How m maybe it's about how much uh, someone has spent. Maybe it's about how much someone has been an evangelist online, how many retweets, likes, you know, shares, etc. That starts to qualify how much acknowledgement, appreciation, and rapport I'm supposed to have with someone. Technology can only validate a relationship so much. The real validation comes from uh, real interaction. And so that's interaction that, you know, is pre-internet, it's the phone. So when, when, once, you can, once you can actually make that, once you can actually validate via the phone, it's like, okay, you know, Hey, do you know that girl? Yeah, I know that girl. Okay, cool. Um, can you call her? Does she pick up? Does, does she text you back? But I mean, texting is one level, but the call and the voice on the other end, that's the validation. So, you know, for me, that's like, okay, that's how I know I actually have a real relationship. If I pick up the phone, they can pick up the phone and call me, that's when the relationship is real. My interest is to remove the layer because anonymity allows people to you know, talk a lot of smack. I don't want to talk to a Twitter handle. I'm interested in talking to real people, you know, because you never, I mean, this is so valuable, man. It's about real relationships, man, you know? And um, I think if there's any, any advice or 
any advice I could give my 19 year old self, it's to actually value relationships. And the way you value relationships is you gotta keep really great track of your contacts. How many contacts do you have? Your fans and supporters, those have gotta be valuable contacts. How does a million dollars sound to a creator? To most creators, to 97 or 99 percent of creators, it sounds like a pipe dream. To people that come and sit at my round table, I can show you how to get there. And I can show you how to get there with a small sliver or fraction of what you would need if you went with any other label. Because the math for me is so simple. 5,000 people at $200 is a million dollars. A thousand people at a thousand dollars is a million dollars. I know how to get you to those thousand people. I know how to get you to uh, that audience and I know how to help you to build that level of engagement so that even if it's, you know, a hundred dollars times 10 to get to that thousand. You know, I just understand it's a new math. My approach to making music now is feature people that need a voice, feature people that need a platform, feature people that have talent and, you know, like I said, how to, what's the gift I would give to my 19 year old self? So me being in Boston, not having any contacts, you know, I said, look, you know, um, all I needed was five racks to get up out of these projects. Uh, all I needed was some contacts, but I wasn't getting no callbacks. So I put it on my back. That's my grind and my time. So when I'm counting these millions, man, that's my money and my shot. Literally, when I was, you know, 19, 20, making beats, and I even had $100, I would take that $100, get on the train, come to New York City with a beat tape, and just be like, man, I hope I, I meet somebody. I will stand outside this studio. I hope I meet somebody, right? Now I'm about, yo, let me just give you the access. I got a beat club. Half of my album is produced by just people who were in their bedroom or whatever and said, look, I'm gonna invest the same hundred that Ryan spent on his train ticket to go stand outside and maybe not even get a listen. I can spend that same hundred, get a listen, and also get guaranteed a 10 times return advance if he likes it and also have the opportunity to come in the studio, have him show me how to take a record, which was just a beat, how to put a string quartet on it, horns and everything. That's my approach to music now. It's like, look, you, you, if you really want to, you can go on YouTube and see it. If I wanted to, I'd produce my whole album myself. It's about, look, how do you pay it forward now? How can I pay it forward? That's my legacy. How many millionaires can I make? Not because it's about the money, but because when you give young creators the ability to have the platform, to have the finances, to have the freedom to create what we're supposed to make, then we can also start to have the renaissance that, you know, when I look at my favorite classical musicians and people still all say like, well, new music is not the same as Mozart, Beethoven, Haydn, Haydn you know, Chopin, Litz, Stravinsky, whatever. When you give people the empowerment to be able to stop thinking in boxes and saying like, look, we ain't got budgets to do this, we ain't got budgets to do that. I'm about actually taking that, taking my access, taking my um, acumen, taking my blueprint, giving people the blueprint saying, look, the hustle is yours now. The technology is, is, is available now. The, the platform is there now. The blueprint is there now. The access is there now because you with me. Go do 10 times what I did. Go, go do 100 times what I did. So that's my, it's crazy, my approach to making music is, a, is really about empowerment now.